reference number, which we're calling this T bar. Okay, it's the notation we use for it. Um, is the shortest distance along the unit circle between the terminal point determined by T and the x-axis. Okay, ultimately what that says to us is that it's asking you what is the distance, what is the arc length that you have to travel to get back to the x-axis, okay, or to get to the x-axis if you haven't met it yet, okay, if you haven't passed over. Um, that's all T-bar is asking, okay. Uh, so if I give you an example, let's, let's say that um, yeah, we'll do it with this one. Let's say T. Hold on a second, guys. My tablet just keeps dying every about thirty seconds. All right, so let's say that T is equal to, uh, let's just do, let's do an easy one. Let's go 5, pi over 6. 5, pi over 6. Uh, my suggestion to you as you're doing this, okay, eventually this is going to be just second nature, but you've got to be able, you got to go through the process to, to, to force it to be ingrained in your memory, okay? Um, so this is, this is how I suggest doing this. It's just like what we did back with reference angles back in Chapter 5, because that's really what's going on here, okay? The, the link between reference angles and uh, reference distances or reference values is identical, okay? Uh, but remember, we took uh, 2 pi, and I'm going to rewrite 2 pi so that it has a denominator of 6. So 2 pi becomes 12 pi or 6, correct? You guys agree with that? Okay, so that would be an arc that, that travels all the way around back to its starting point. What would this be over here? What would pi be called? 6 pi or 6. Okay, and if I do that, because ultimately, guys, finding the reference value is just adding and subtracting. Okay, but we're going to have fractions for the most part, especially when they give me rating. Um, so it's nice to have all the denominators the same. That's what we need for addition and subtraction. So I always do that. Um, just real quick, because I know the applet is written in terms of, of degrees here for that angle. Um, remember what we talked about last week is the fact that when we talk about T, we're talking about uh, we're talking about that distance right there, that arc. Okay. And if that arc is T, let me move some stuff here. If that arc is T, which right now is just pi over 6. The reason that is pi over 6 is because we, we know that S, which is arc length, is equal to R times theta. The theta has to be in radians. You guys remember talking about that in Chapter 5? We did angular velocity, linear velocity, that kind of stuff. First thing we talked about was finding the length of an arc. Okay. Well, what circle are we in? The unicircle. So what's R in the unicircle? One. So arc length is the same as theta. So we're saying that this thing here, this red arc, is the same as this angle in here. Does that make sense? But this... This formula had the requirement that theta was in what? Theta is in radians. So this, this arc length is identical to theta if we have theta in radians. Okay, now GeoGebra will want me to take it right now. At least I haven't figured it out or, or done the, the correct programming to get that 30 to be showing up as pi over 6. I'll, I'll try to work on that later today. Um, but S is equal to theta. What I'm going to do right now, and you do see this in some textbooks, is that essentially S and T are the same thing. Now, I think this textbook uses T because we're looking for a terminal point. So terminal starts with T, I would think, right? Okay, so that might be the link. Uh, why they use T? I have seen textbook use X instead, okay? Uh, and X bar, does that make sense? Uh, so it, and it doesn't really matter. If you guys want to, back to chapter five, we use theta, right? 
fewer state and theta bar still is fine, okay? Um, I'm really not all that concerned whether you're using the, the triangle approach or the unit circle approach uh, because they're so closely related, okay? Um, all right, so let's get back to our question. All right, so when I'm asking um, T to be 5 pi or 6, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trace that out, 5 pi or 6. Now, I'm not sure exactly... I am, but maybe maybe being a 11th or 12th grade right now and seeing this for maybe the first week, I'm not sure exactly where 5 pi or 6 kind of stops or shows up, okay? But I do know how to add and subtract and that kind of stuff with fractions. And I know if this is 0 and this is 6 pi or 6, this guy up here has got to be 3 pi or 6, right? Halfway in between. So I know 5 pi over 6 is still beyond that, correct? Okay, but it's going to stop in the second quadrant because once I get to here, I'm greater than 5 pi over 6, right? So I'm not sure if it's that point, maybe that point, or that one. I'm going to tell you that it is that one, okay? But we're asking right now, what are the, what is the reference value that's associated with that? Okay, well, the reference value that's associated with that, so that, that arc length is 5 pi over 6. The reference distance associated with that is the distance then that we need to travel to get to the x-axis. And the x-axis is terminal point is 6 pi over 6, right? So how long would that blue arc be? The red dot is identifying 5 pi over 6. It would be 5 over 6, right? So that blue arc, that blue arc is what we refer to as our reference value. And it's pi or 6. Okay. Now, what do we mean about reference? Reference means we're going to ask pi over 6 something about t, which is 5 pi over 6. We're find something out about 5 pi over 6. So we're going to reference back to t being pi over 6. Well, t being pi over 6, or t bar being pi over 6, that's that ordered pair there, right? So the, the reference, the, the purpose of referencing is so that I can find the ordered pair of that point right there. Well, you reference it back to a point in the first quadrant that you're confident in, pi over 6. So that point right there is going to have the same exact coordinates as pi over 6. Does that make sense to everybody? But now, think about this, you're in the coordinate plane, and if I started at 0, 0, and I wanted to travel from 0, 0 to that point right there, defined by a, a t value of 5 pi over 6, what direction do I have to go in the x first? I got to go negative, right? got to go to the left. So that's why that number is negative, negative radical 3 over 2 comma 1 half. And that's my reference value, okay? My, sorry, my t value is 5 pi over 6. My reference value is pi over 6, and my terminal point for 5 pi over 6 is identified by radical 3 over 2, negative radical 3 over 2, comma 1. Okay? Right. So then, the same thing happens. Let's say I asked you for um, let's say t is equal to 26 pi over 3. 26 pi over 3. Okay. I'm going to write 2 pi in terms of a denominator of 3. So it would be 6 pi over 3, right? Pi would be 3 pi over 3. Okay. So 26 pi over 3, well, that would be more than one pass around, right? Which is fine. Okay, you can have arc lengths that are multiple circumferences. Um, so what I what I want you guys to know is that 26 pi over 3, nobody's going to commit that number to that terminal point number to memory. Okay, uh, for the same reason I wouldn't com commit 260 pi over 3 to memory or 2600 pi over 3 to memory. Okay, what we have commit to memory is essentially these three points in the first quadrant. Okay, and then a little bit of algebra to 
kind of dwindle this thing down to um, a more friendly value, okay? Think about this. Would you guys agree that, let me go to this applet quickly. All right, so this applet shows me uh, that red, as I, as I move around, see how it shows the red arc? Okay, so let's say that I'm dealing with 60 degrees right there. Would you guys agree that... The point at 1,500 degrees is exactly the same as the point at 60 degrees. Does that kind of make sense to everybody? Okay. So that idea, essentially having terminal points that are co-terminal, can allow me to simply start subtracting multiples of 2 pi from this thing. Okay. So I'm going to take 26 pi over 3 and subtract... 6 pi over 3, and then subtract another 6 pi over 3, and another one, and another one. And we'll keep subtracting until this number gets down between 0 and 6 pi. Okay? Because I've got the denominators all the same already, all I really need to do is figure out what do I need to multiply 6 by so that I can find the smallest integer, let's say, let's just say this, the greatest integer that is less than 26. And that is it's still a multiple of six. So can I multiply what I mean by that? If I multiply this by four, does that give me 26 pi over three minus 24 pi over three? Does that make sense to everybody? So 24 is the greatest integer multiple of six that is still less than 26, right? If I want to multiply it by five, I want to go on over 26. Okay. Um, so, if I take 26 pi over 3 minus 24 pi over 3, I get 2 pi over 3. Okay? So, I'm more interested in dealing with that number than I am with 26 pi over 3 because they're the exact same location in the coordinate plane. Does that make sense? Okay. So, let's think about this. How do I do this with 2 pi over 3? Maybe I'm not confident where this thing is, but this is zero. This is three. Halfway would be, usually you don't write it this way, but 1.5 pi over three, right? So because two is bigger than 1.5, we know at least it stops in this quadrant, right? It stops in the second quadrant somewhere. You're going to learn that it is that one there, okay? But I don't really care if, if, if I know where exactly it should be positioned up here. I don't even care if I thought maybe it should have been this point here. What I do care about is knowing that if that arc is 2 pi over 3, that arc right there is 2 pi over 3, how far do I need to go to get to there? Pi over 3, right? So T bar is pi over 3. Now, what does that do for me? Now, I have known, and so have you, hopefully, that pi over 3 is that set of ordered pairs, right? So, the ordered pair over here would be 1 half, root 3 over 2. But what did you know, then, about the 1 half? It's got to be negative. Okay. Is that all right with everybody? Um, now, eventually, okay, if you force yourself to do this, you're going to be very, very rapid and quick with that, okay? Um, I, I have had people in the past just say, well, Mr. Fay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have that thing in front of me all the time in my homework. I won't get the answer right every single time, right? But when that thing is not allowed to be used on a test or a quiz, you paddled yourself up a, a pretty dirty creek, right? Okay. Uh, so make sure that we're, we're learning this concept and, and able to um, kind of use reference values uh, to evaluate. Because eventually, and the reason we're doing this, guys, is, is we are trying to build uh, a, a kind of, you guys remember like in second, third grade, when you're trying to learn to multiply and divide, right? What did you guys do when you're trying to learn to multiply and divide? 
What was the number one thing that teachers had you guys do? Okay, you flashcard, you did, did you guys, did you guys do uh, like time tests and stuff like that? Okay. Um, that's really what's going on here. I'm not going to get, maybe I will. Um, you, you would try to see how many things you could do and how many factor, or sorry, products you could do in, you know, five minutes. How many uh, sums and differences you could do in five minutes. Something like that, right? Um, because of how much would you guys agree at this point, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing are pretty critical components to math? Yeah, so you want to be able to do those things quickly, right? Uh, this is kind of the same idea. We will, we're going to eventually want to be able to do uh, evaluation of sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, right, and cotangent very quickly. Right? This is the foundation that's going to allow us to do that. Right? If, you, if you force yourself to work with it, in an appropriate way, you're going to get pretty good at it. Okay. Um, if you, if you, and it's the same idea. The person that uses their calculator all the time to do two times three. I got John students asking, you know, what's uh, what's seven times four? I'll grab the calculator. Okay. Well, you shouldn't have to do that, right? So don't be that person, Zach. When we're, when we're doing the assertion. Okay. Um. Well, before we go on, let, let's talk about why, why, why the unit circle? Why, why choose one, right? Because we could choose two, we could choose three and do all the same stuff. Do uh, you guys remember anything about geometry? I know you should because you had a fantastic geometry teacher. Right, Zach? Zach, are we participating today? But you probably had a fantastic geometry teacher. If it wasn't me, it's probably fantastic, right? What's that thinking? How'd that go for you? Um, I got ahead, but I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily the most gifted in geometry. I've always wanted to fact, because I've never had this conversation with you. Would you, would you suggest to another geometry student or algebra one student to? Do it all on course like that? It depends on what you want to make, I guess. I mean, for me, my biggest thing is just I wanted to be in more advanced classes. Yeah. But if you want to actually learn the material and have it stuck in your noggin for a future math course, you're like, probably not the best way to make it. <laughs> like, to be completely honest, is you don't really learn a whole lot, right? All right. right now I've got these two triangles, right? What do you guys know about those two triangles? Orange one and red one? They're similar. Who said that? Robert? Why are they similar? Okay. So they both have a 30 degree angle on them, right? And, and I've created them, it's not written in there, but they're both right angles there. So that's angle, angle, similarity. Okay? Now I'm going to put some letters in here and pull this C still. Terrible. I wish this thing would, every time I pick a new pen up, it goes back to the smaller. So let's see. Um, F, D, let's call this point. Uh, B, let's call that one. Okay. okay. So if these are similar, you guys remember we called, uh, like, let's just call this first one CBA, triangle CBA. And we're going to say similar to now we need to we need to write their names so that they're parts they're 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 angles that are congruent correspond in their name. So angle C with the 30 degree angle in the orange triangle it needs to be first in the red triangle, right? Make sense, everybody? So C has got to go there. Now the right angle came second in the orange triangle, so the right angle's got to come second in the red triangle. So we're going to call this F, and then we'll finish at D, right? Does that make sense, everybody? So they were similar by angle, angle. That was a um, a postulate that we learned in geometry. Uh, uh, that we learned in geometry, and then the thank you. The the result of that, when you have similar shapes, the idea of polygons, uh, the way we defined it was that they're the same shape but they're different sizes, right? We should know how they are different. 
So that creates what we refer to as functionality, right? And there, there's a certain scale factor that will allow us to enlarge the orange one to become the red one, uh, or vice versa, the red one to shrink down to the orange one. That scale factor can be found this way. CB should compare to CF. BA should compare to FD. And CA should compare to CD. You guys agree with that? Okay. Those are the three ratios that are true as we go through uh, similarity. Now, what we've done essentially is that if I look at C, I'm going to go to the last one, CA to CD. What are those from the right triangle? What is CA for the orange triangle? Hypotenuse. Okay, what is CD for the red triangle? Hypotenuse. So I'm going to write CA over CD, but I'm going to write it as orange hypotenuse. Okay, and CD I'm going to write as red hypotenuse. Right? Does everybody agree with that? Okay, that's the same thing as CA over CD. Okay, let's look at BA and FD, let's look at that middle ratio. BA, okay, for this 30 degree angle, BA would be what side? Up. So I'm going to say BA, and then we're, we're always, so right now I'm referencing to that 30 degree. So BA would be the opposite side of, oh, orange one. And then DF would be the opposite side of the red one. And that should, be, that should be a true proportion for those two triangles. When we look at those, though, they're comparing a part of one triangle to a part of a second triangle, right? Well, we know, hopefully, hopefully remember, because you had a fantastic geometry teacher, what can you do with those two things in any proportion that you're ever coming from. Okay, you cross multiply, and because of their cross products, it's two times three, the same thing as three times two. Because of the commutative property, we can do what with their location? We can switch it, we can flip those things. So let's see if we flip those. Let me get my mouse to do this. Huh? I don't know, what's that plugged in? We should be able to take that one there. Take some time to move this one. Unbelievable. And we should get that, right? So now what does that do? It compares the orange in the first ratio. Now it's orange to the orange, right? It's comparing parts of this triangle to parts of that triangle. What is orange hypotenuse divided by? Well, let's actually because of the way the way I've gotten this. Can we? It might make a little bit more sense to do this. Once I have, once I have the um, proportion to be true, can we always look at reciprocals as well? So take the reciprocal of the left hand side. Take the reciprocal of the right hand side. Does that make sense? So it might make sense. It might be easier for us to answer that question in regards to let's put orange out front. I guess not. Doing that, right? What's opposite divided by hypotenuse? That's sine, right? So that's sine, and I, I, right now I'm using, I'll just use theta, I guess. So sine of theta is opposite of the orange divided by opposite of the hypotenuse, which is going to be equal then to the opposite of the red divided by the hypotenuse of the red, right? Does that make sense? So these three things are the same. So because these two proportions were equal, okay, sine of theta can be either equal to that one or it can be equal to that one. Well, what's it? It makes it a lot better. Just look at the smallest triangle possible, right? The smallest, I guess, not smallest, but maybe most convenient hypotenuse. The most convenient hypotenuse would be one that doesn't really exist in division, right? If you want, correct? 
Because then the denominator just gets to go away. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. Um, but that's the idea. This this triangle can be anything it wants to be. This red one can be as big as it wants to be. Okay. I could take that point D, and I can start moving that out as much as I want to. As long as there's a 30 degree angle in there, this ratio here is going to be exactly the same as the ratio here that existed in the orange one. Does everybody recognize that? I, I was always a person when I was in high school, I didn't understand that. Okay. Uh, and, and I was always, you know, I could do the robotic stuff with, you know, going through the processes or the algorithms that they told me to, to develop the values, to get the answers. But I never really understood why the sine of 30 for the orange triangle is the sine of 30 for all the triangles. Okay. And that's the logic. That's the reason for it. Okay. Um, now, how does that benefit us? How does, how does creating a triangle here where we've got this angle being 30, this one being 90, this one being 60, how does it benefit us to make this distance here 1? Okay? And here, here's the logic. If I had sine of... Let's just say T, okay? T being, again, remember T is, the, is this arc here. I'm just going to use T because that's what the, the PDF uses, uh, if you were to read that. Uh, but it's the same as that arc there, or that angle, right? Okay? We know back to, um, you know, the triangle approach in Chapter 5, that if this is Y, and this is X, and this is R, okay? The sine of t would have been y over r, right? Opposite over hypotenuse, correct? Well, why is it important or why is it useful to use r to be 1? Because now we get y over 1, which is just y, right? So inside the unit circle, when I'm asked what is... Well, I guess I deleted it earlier... What is the sine of pi over 6? It's the y value for that ordered pair. Because it's this divided by 1. Does that make sense? And that's why when we take our calculator and we're in radian mode, when we type in sine of pi over 6, it spits back 1 half. All right? But now with the unit circle, we should be able to be the calculator. We should be able to get that value uh, a lot faster than it takes to click the mode, go to radian, now type in, sign, pi over six, hit in, okay? Um, is that right there, everybody? So what would then, if, if sine of t is y over r, what do you think cosine of t is gonna be? The x over r, right? But what's r? One, okay? So when I look at my unit circle here, Okay. I'm going to write over here on the side just for our, our, our convenience that sine of t is y. I should probably maybe do this alphabetical. And cosine of t is x. Now, people are going to forget this. So what I remember, it's the same thing I kind of taught you when we did domain arrangements. Okay. D is alphabetical before r, right? X was the alphabetical before y. So D and X match up. Y and R matchup, correct? Would you guys say that C is alphabetical before S for cosine and sine? And X still comes before Y, right? So C always goes with X and S always goes with Y. I hope you remember this, okay? But once I show you all this, once I put that in there, and I ask you guys, what is the cosine of pi over 4? Cosine of pi over 4? Well, now we're looking at that angle right there, right? Okay? Or this arc, and the cosine is the x coordinate. It's radical 2 or 2. Okay? If I ask you what's the cosine of 60 or pi over 3, well, it's the x value of that ordered pair. It's the 1 half. And you can verify that. You can take your calculator out. Now I'm in degrees, so I'll just type in cosine of 60. But cosine of 60 spits back my 1 half. Exactly that. Is that okay with everybody? And that's the logic behind why we use R to be 1, why we're interested in the unit circle, okay? Um, 
because then we can relate the idea that if we've got this image in front of us and we understand how to create this image, we can answer questions quickly, evaluate sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent, all of these multiples of 30 or pi over 6, uh, multiples of um, 45 or pi over 4, pretty easily and quickly. Okay. Um, so let's... Go to this picture here. Okay, so we've got sine of t. I just we just kind of walk through the sine of t is equal to y. And again, guys, I'm not I'm not a big stickler in the past. I I've, I've just kind of ignored showing it as as, as a terminal distance like t. I always just use theta. And eventually, that's what we're going to worry with or worry about is theta, the angle. And not so much this distance, uh, but we, we, we've talked about how they relate based on that S equals R theta um, kind of relation. So T is fine. Um, try to avoid any other variable like X or Y there, if that, that argument that makes sense, because then that confuses you with what they're equal to. Um, but sine T we know is Y, cosine T we know is E to X. Okay? Uh, so if we know all those order pairs around the circle, we should have. Uh, the ability to recall sine and cosine of any one of those 17 kind of multiples of 30 or 45. Uh, so tangent then, didn't we talk about in, in chapter 5 that tangent of something, we'll just use t, was equal to sine over cosine? Does that make sense? Well, if we're in the unit circle, sine of t is what? Y and cosine of t is x. Now we can't have x to be zero, can't do division by zero, so we'll talk about that here in a moment. But now here's the question. Where does this come, become useful? Let's say that I'm working uh, at pi over 3, so this is pi over 3. I ask you, what is the tangent of pi over 3? Nobody's going to memorize this. Okay? Do not memorize it. I, I, I strongly suggest that you don't do it. Um, because you can, you can figure it out real quick. Well, if I'm, if I'm going to go um, tangent, well, that's y over x, okay? The y value for pi over 3 is that. And the x value is that. So when I take radical 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, it gives me tangent of pi over 3. Essentially the 1. The denominator is here to cancel out, right? So get radical 3 over 1. Right. Okay. Type in on your calculator, tangent, pi, you got to be in pi over 3, you got to be in radian mode, but it should fit back to you, uh, what was it, 1.7 something? Okay. Which is the same exact thing as right to 3. So, now here's the thing, why, why can x not be 0? I, I can't have division by 0, right? Well, where is x 0? What values on the unit circle? What radians? What arc length, maybe, when you view it that way, would give you an x value of 0? Right there's an x value of 0, right? So at pi over 2, if you're type 1 calculator, tangent of pi over 2, let's go back to say domain here. Okay, or might even say division by 0. What's that? Domain here. Okay. Um, and then down here would be another one. Okay, not have um, x to be 0. Okay, so. Uh, eventually, that's going to relate. How's that going to uh, make sense to us later on? We're going to take later on, we'll take the unit circle, and we're going to graph it. Uh, we're going to basically create some ordered pairs where your x value is a radian measurement and your y value is maybe just the, the cosines of the unit circle. It's going to give you a way, okay, a sine or cosine curve. Um, and then when we do that with the tangent, we're going to get asymptotes of pi or two and three pi or two. Uh, so we will kind of pick up from there uh, tomorrow. We'll do some of these examples. Um, here you see, you know, cosecant and sine are still reciprocals, right? Secant cosine still reciprocals. Cotangent tangent still reciprocals. Uh, but then you got the requirements. The denominator still cannot be zero. So then you would find out, you know, where would those places be? Okay. So why cannot be zero? That's that. That would be when t is equal to 0 or pi, right? Uh, this x would be 0. That's 10 pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. 
and then CK would be at zero and five. So those, those quadrant intersection points, um, since the points one, zero, zero, one, negative one, zero, and zero, negative one, provide issues in those quotient ratios, or, or quotient, sorry, quotient identities. <clears throat> Is that okay? Is that something we, we can understand? All right. Um, I'll open 6-1. I'll, I'll make it due Thursday.